this evening, uh, you know, just yesterday, um, I had we had a visitor coming, which some of you had an idea, you know. She came to stay with us to wait on the Lord, and um, she had some visitors coming, and amongst her visitors was um, a servant of God based in uh, Calabar. I don't know that much yet, so I won't say, I mean, I barely know. I just know that we hosted him overnight, and um, I asked him if he would, but, you know, it's interest every time. We kept saying yesterday, God has people. You know, we've said that many times. God has people. God has people everywhere. People we don't know about. People we, you know, that he has deposited things with that we are not aware of. But the beauty of it is that when God is the one releasing, you know, he's a, like, God is like a dispenser of good things. Okay? How does the Bible say it? Every good gift, James 1, every perfect gift is from above, from the Father of light, with whom there's no variableness, no shadow of turning. And you know the gifts of God are, so he says every good gift, there's multiple gifts, kinds of gifts, and all of that. But included in the bundle of things called gifts are people. People are gifts too. He gave some. And he begins to list gifts. Human gifts. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. You know, so what is normally referred to as the fivefold ministry is a gift to the body of Christ. It's a gift to, to, to the church of God. A gift to the church of God. And similar to our other visitor about two weeks plus ago, um, I, so I just met him yesterday, and I asked him, and he was gracious. He was to leave for Calabar early this morning. And I said, please, could you come share? I mean, he was just sharing a little how he got born again in 1972. Did you hear? <laughs> did, you, did you hear the year? Did you write it down? Because I know your... <laughs> It said 197, then two. You know those things you read in history books. So 1972. Even if you didn't believe it, <laughs> a look can convince you. And uh, <laughs> the scriptures say that um, the gray hair, when found in the way of righteousness, you know, is a great bless, great blessing. You know. And I'm reading an article from something he wrote in 1982, talking about <laughs> justification, sanctification, glorification. I'm like, okay. Okay. 1982, 1994, just. Um, the little I do know, he is a writer. I saw a book of his yesterday, and I believe he's written lots of other things. And he was just sharing with me over at night some things about... About... Uh, the ages talked about how I had the vision in 73 or so and the Lord would grab him and begin to reveal things to him and showed him things and very interestingly a lot that you know he'll say it himself in fact I missed part of it when I came in he was speaking with our other guest uh, Amma Christie and he was saying some things yeah, of course you know this is where we live but to hear it from others this is what we desire and this is what we you know have hungered after so we want to be able to share of his um, wealth of um, share something I mean the only reason he's here now is because of us but you know, so I ask you to, I, 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 and as you would expect, I haven't told him to, the only thing I ask him if he share, you know, at least part of his testimony with us. I haven't heard it, so I'll be hearing it with you, you know. And let's just hear about the 72, 82, 92, 2002, 2012. Next year will be 50 years. So I'm kind of, just, I just want to hear small, you know. And uh, I'm sure... It will bless us all, and the Lord will tell us something. So, God bless you as you listen as we welcome Apostle Inya Egbe. Hmm? 
praise the Lord. I'm quite excited standing before this great congregation of fusion leaders, dynamites, that will produce dynamics under the power of the anointing. What God is about to do is quite amazing. You now stand before these young people. God bless you, real good. Father, I thank you. We return all the glory to you. And I said, Lord, look down through the cross to minister. May somebody be blessed by these testimonies in Jesus' name. Amen. Indeed, I, as our pastor has said, yesterday was our first meeting. I've never met him. He has never met me. Uh, fortunately, somehow, he mentioned a name, you know, and uh, because I was still somehow on the hiding, somehow perhaps, he did not know. Because Ubi Abam, you know, uh, we are the people, I was one of those that started him up. You uh, know, when he, when he came out to become, when he left Presbyterian Church to cross over. Yes. But thank God that you knew him. He sat at his feet. Aha. Uh -huh. And uh, by then, <laughs> praise the Lord. I'm from Cross River State, and I'm here to testify to the infallibility of the Word of God and the practical applications of this word. And that this word, as we're going to see, uh, the Lord said, I've allotted them to the different generations. And I want you to open to Isaiah chapter 34, verse 16 and verse 17. Isaiah chapter 34, verse 16 and verse 17. He said, Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. No one of these shall fail, nor shall want her mate. For my mouth it has commanded, and his spirit it has gathered them. And he has cast the lot for them, and he has divided it unto them by line. They shall possess it forever, from generation to generation they shall they, they dwell therein. Just as my brother requested, I hardly give my testimony on my new birth. Because it looks a bit, do I say, mystical or not quite mystical? Uh, it's just what, at the time I had this conversion, I did not have much knowledge about Christianity, even though. I was baptized in my denomination in 1969, and my grandfather happened to be uh, a, a man who took the Apostolic Church from Calabar in the 30s to my area to Itigidi, Ugeb, Ikom, and then to uh, Cameroon. And, uh, I was religious, like a lot of people are, but being religious did not keep me back. I, I tried to follow the trend of events then as guides. You know, even though I did not go into smoking in both, but I was a chief smoker even at the age of 30. I was smoking cigar like. And a school in the secondary school called the Presbyterian Secondary School, Abakeleke. And that was where the thing took place. One beautiful morning, I had a dream. 
And the dream was so glorious. I was taken from Abakleke. Abakleke is about 36, 36 miles away from Itigidi. And Abakleke is in uh, Oboni State now. Yes. Why Etigidi is a crossover. And Etigidi, you know, it is the boundary is the the river, the crossover. We have crossover there, that crossover here. And then I was taken from there, as at that time uh, Biafra, I mean the war had just finished. So anything you can bring to school is accepted. We use blocks to sit and write. If you have math, bring it and lie in the dormitory. And I was lying on the floor, actually, with two other uh, uh, people. One senior was using his own bed. And then in that dream, it may look as a dream, but now I understand that it was not just a mere dream. I found myself at my hometown and some meters away from the river. The river had overflowed, overflown, and uh, as I was just standing there while the other two people were nearer the river, I, had a, I, I saw a scene, and the scene was so, so interesting and frightening to me. I, I saw a scene of, you know, very bright sky, very, very bright sky. And then, as I saw that, I heard a voice calling me by my name three times. And the voice said, why don't you give your life to me so that I will redeem the covenant I had with your grandfather? So, when I asked, he said, I am Jesus calling you. That, that, that make me to be frightened, I fell to the ground. As I fell to the ground, the voice now asked me to stand up. Before I fell to the ground, the voice asked me to turn. When I turned, I saw a pig, which dimension may be as much as this, if not bigger, but very gigantic and fear-looking. And the pig seemed to demonstrate how he's going to eat me. And the voice said, if you are, by your disobedience at the end, the pig will eat you up. So that, that made me to just, I mean, I broke down and cried. So when I broke down and cried, the voice as you stand, as I was standing, rising up to my feet, he now said, your sins have been forgiven you. Go in peace. And when that was said, oh my God. I just heard a bird, brank, 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 calling us, you know, dormitory. But something unusual took place in my life. I was known as somebody that you can fight, you, know, you can do this, but something happened. From my belly, what I never heard, I, 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 I heard it. I saw it was, I, it seemed as if river was flowing out of my belly. My heart was full of love. My face was lit. And my God, for how many days I didn't I could not even eat because I was too full and I did not understand what was it was all about. Not today that you have Christian all over. Not today. You know, students, when I came, I began to witness. God, I'm already preaching. 
I didn't know the Bible, but I was witnessing. And then they, they that my, my fellows, and they say, you know, is Saul also among the prophets? That was a question that was raised of me. And some of them say, well, Inya, forget about it. Very soon you come and join us here. But I thank God that that did not happen. The Lord kept me. And the other day, I think some years ago, I was still not prof- uh, preferred then. You know, when we called, we said, Inya, I'm born again oh, as well. A lot of them have become born again. So when this joy of the Lord came and great things, it's good to have wise counselor. Not knowing as young as I was, I was about 19, and uh, the zeal was so much, I was almost drunken. And I, 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 I was threatening to pack my things and go and start preaching. The senior prefect then of the school, who was a Christian, he called me and said, Inya, I will, will understand that something has happened to you, but it will be good for you to finish your school so that you have a grip to be used of God. And I thank God for that advice because that advice has really, really helped me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, what am I talking to? Why, why, why do I bring that? It is good to listen to good advice. Good counselor. When they advise you prayerfully, put it into practice, it will shoot you. Had it been that I, I left then to school when I, had, when I was just doing a, a class two, what would I have done? Nothing. But the Lord helped me. And then the Lord began to open me into great things, just like he have said, he said, search the book. The book. The book of the Lord. So one thing you should understand is that when you are holding the Bible, you should know that this Bible does not belong to a man. It doesn't belong to anybody. It belongs to the Lord. And the Lord recognizes that it is the book of the Lord. Then what will you do? He say, read it. Read it. I don't know how to emphasize that, but it's amazing. It's amazing to read the word of God. I'll give a testimony to that. As the power of God was coming, uh, before then, you know, the enemy tried. Tried. Christianity was not as common as God we have. I was, in fact, the first person to become a Christian in my, in my village. So they do not understand anything I'm talking about. And I have brothers and sisters who were just, you know, worldly, somewhere along the line. They, they, they whisked me away, and I went back. God, yeah, 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 yeah. And when I went back, the enemy said, ah, I think I've got you. He dealt with me. He dealt with me. Oh, thank God for the scripture union. That, that year, everywhere, every man of God I came, I will go and meet for counseling. And all the things they say, wait on the Lord. Pray. Nobody could really, really help me. Because I was possessed by demons. That in any time, if indeed the gathering like this are coming, and the praise and the worship is going on, I will run, or prayers, I will run out. I cannot stay. But the Lord did something for me. 75, I cannot forget that. I was taken to a trance. And in that trance, it was a savannah land, as it were, where I saw an object, a very beautiful object coming down. And they said, they say, open your eyes, and I saw. And when that object came, it fell before me. And the object turned to become a black, ugly creation. And he said, I am Satan. Ah. He said, what did you come to do? He said, I come to fight you. To fight me? I said, it's okay. I use the name of Jesus and the blood of Jesus. 
and we fought. But the fighting, when I use the name and the blood, he will fall to the ground and roll and roll and roll until I had the victory. After that, 75, 76, the loss came again. He broke. I was having my quiet time, reading the scripture, and just of a sudden, as I was reading and just praying, the Lord came and took me to heaven. He lied, and he was just taking me. And that was my first time. The beautiful leaves and everything was so wonderful. Somewhere along the line, I was interrupted. We were interrupted because my junior brother came and knocked on the door and had to come back. But after that, 25th of May, he, took, he came, came back again and took me and showed me things and spoke things. He has done that many times. And one day, when he was showing me all the beauty and everything, I said, Lord, if there's anything there on earth that will make me to change my mind, no, please, before that thing happens, take my life. It's, heaven is real. I'm not just fabricating. Heaven is real. And what the Lord has said, I have seen it. There's substance on ground to show that he did not make any mistake. Praise the Lord. You see, he will use me to open some things. And he did. That's 77. The Lord now spoke. The anointing was mightily upon me. It was in the uh, gathering of the scripture union. Uh, I could still remember uh, a prophecy, word of prophecy came upon me. I, I was the person who was prophesying. And I said, well, God says the Lord that he's going to use me to write books. Ah. But exactly, by then I was walking, I was walking. Exactly one year after that, the Lord began to do something. What he started doing I would get, he said, get a notebook. I've got a notebook. I would sit down and write for 18 to 19, I mean, 18 to 20 hours in a day at a stretch. I would just write and write and write. It was so mysterious, but it was so wonderful. I wrote, I've forgotten the name the English people call it. I saw it before, but I've forgotten. This, my finger, where the pen was resting, now form a growth because of excessive writing. It form a growth. But thank God that the thing has gone. Praise the Lord. Some people say, well, uh, because I don't have a computer, I don't have this. Not now. I cannot write until I have a computer. God was not waiting for a computer for me. I was using pen and he was doing it. When God has, if marked you for something, it will perfect it. He said, he said, if you look, he said, none of these shall fail. The promises, the covenants that you see, and course of experience you have, must be measured by the world. Any experience that does not fall in line with the world, don't accept it. Or contradicts the world, don't accept it. And he says, he say, if you look at them, none of them will fail. So when God said, I will do this, and I knew. During that period, I love praying and I love reading the word. I was reading the word of God one day alone. In those days, when it is holidays, uh, in the primary school, you know, the normally uh, closest, the windows, the broken windows, I'm making such a way that you will not be able to enter. But I will try and create a, 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 a space just to enter. And I'll go and stay inside there alone, reading the word. Reading the word of God. And one day God surprised me. The Bible tells us that the word of God is sweeter than honey in the honeycomb. And just of a sudden, I was there alone. Nobody was there. I was not taking tea. 
They say, well, when I read, I take tea. No. I was just there. I did not even take water. But just of a sudden, from there, down, honey. I said, I, I was, I, 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 I saw it. I said, he said, that's called David. That's us. That's you. That's the reality of the word of God. The word of God is practical. He said, it shall seek me and find me. When it shall search for me with all your heart. And I will find. I know that every one of you sitting down here, God has something for you. Because he has opened my eyes to see the great sea of youth. Young men and young women he was going to use. But when he opened my eyes in that 78, I thought that it was something that was going to happen the following day. When, when I talk, I talk as it's going to happen the following day. But it has taken up to 45 years. And it has not come to pass exactly as it has. But he has done things that show that indeed his hand is upon his servant. And not only that, that this is African time. I am one of the persons that project Africa. He spoke to me in 76 that this is African time. And that in that 76, there's a transition from America that was holding the brief to Africa. And things will change. And indeed, God is doing that. That's why you're sitting here. That's why you're all here. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. I am three because God is keeping to his word. God is keeping to his word. That's why the Bible tells us, it says, let his word, does God, Dwell in you richly. Colossians 3.16 Admonishing one another in sound. I remember that that one is happening here. When you begin to sing and things are going to happen. And is it not happening with you? That is it. That is it. So that's a fourth test of what is about to happen. It's a fourth test of what is about to happen. And I believe God. Even though the, the church seems today to be very naive and incapable, the Bible tells us that the knowledge of the law shall fill the earth as And that knowledge is passing through you. That's so when you come, I came, you know, you see all this. All this. As you study, and it gets into you. Because the most important thing is the amount of word, his word that is in you that matters. Not just the Bible. It is the amount that is in you that you have assimilated. That's the thing that become the sword. And God is going to use it greatly in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Beloved, as I have said, by God's grace, I have written quite some books. And most of those books are pioneering work. Because they project the end time of which uh, Pastor Ita is part of it from the glimpse and what I've heard and what I have seen. And then you are part of it. But in order to function properly, you must be trained, which is this is the training ground. This is the training ground. And you are receiving it from the depot. Receive it. Because tomorrow, you may not see him. And you will not see him, but you may somewhere all over the world scatter you to go with what you have. To go and shine and release a light. Praise the Lord. Uh, let us remember, I want to remind you that the Christianity of today does seem as if he's suffering from a short cause. Is that how they call it? Shall be healed. Amen. And restored. 
and will become viable. Amen. And when you speak, the world will be like hammer. You see, men that are hurting criminals, criminals that police, no matter how you torture them, you put them, they will not tell you the truth. They will be so hard. But the time is coming, as we preach the word, they will, they will fall and cry like children. Yeah. And I say, Nigeria needs it. You know, we are noted uh, uh, in the whole world as other we are number second, you know, most corrupt nation. But the Bible tells us that where sin abounds, what happened? Great abound much more. That's what I want us to know. Grace abound much more. And that grace that abound much more must pass through you. You become the expression of that grace. That's the essence to why you are listening to the word. You are being told. Uh, just as the Bible says, when Philip asked the Lord, Jesus said, show us the Father. Jesus said, Philip, you mean I have been so long with you and you don't know the Father? He that sees me sees the Father. And later on, the Holy Spirit that passed through Paul said that Jesus was the express image of God. That is exactly what God wants you to become. To become the express image of Christ. Here, here, here. Not in heaven. We're talking about here. And that could only come as you will in your will to his will. I say, not my will, but that will be done. And you must be ready to study. And you must be ready to pray. Of course, the more you study the word, and you study with an open heart, the more the world will sanctify you. The world will cleanse you. The world will give you grace. Like when I was talking about that, my conversion, things happened drastically. I became changed. It came to a point that I had to go to the hospital for them to find out what is wrong with me. Ah, my God. Oh, my God. But thank God, you know, the cigarette, you, I don't, you can, cannot withstand any person where they would smoke. The odor was very positive. The grace of God. When the grace of God is revealed in a man, it's amazing. He gives you strength. Like as I was passing through the, the digest, your pastor gave me as was reading it. Uh, yes, the, all the, there have been misunderstanding between grace and law. People don't really, really understand what the law is. To my understanding, the law is just as the universe cannot exist or operate except by principles. God released laws that governs and they are called what? Principles. Those who did physics and all those principles. So when we talk about law, we are talking about principles. And when the Bible talks about, you know, when Paul was hitting about the law, what he was trying to say is that the place of the sacrifice, the aspect of the sacrifice of pouring blood has been taken care of. That no animal was perfect enough or powerful enough to have a tool for man. Because what the animals was doing, their own was just to cover. But Jesus has come for thorough cleansing. And remove and renew, I mean, a, a new creation. So, but the, the Jews did not understand it. The Jews did not understand it. It, it. Just as you are sitting, as I'm standing, you cannot say, ah, I, I don't believe in bones. So. If you put bone in your mouth, it may break your teeth. I don't believe in bones. Ah, you don't believe in bones. You think so? So you believe in God. You believe in this flesh. You see how lovely and we polish. And polish it. Now, without the uh, skeleton, the skeleton inside of you, would there have been anybody? As simple as that. The skeleton. 
That skeleton is in form of truth. The law. It builds up. It's there. It gives you the shape. And then, others are clothed. The, this and everything. And you begin to polish it to become what it is. And that's why Jesus said that he did not come to destroy the law, not the prophet. No. Another aspect of the law that I want to draw here, which those who have had wrong understanding are fallen, is the Sabbath. Are you getting me there? The Sabbath. Yes, the, the, the Bible, the New Old Testament says that we must keep the Sabbath. But when Christ came, he's the embodiment of the Lord. Anyone, Moses wrote of me. So when he came, he, he was the embodiment of everything. And God has planned it. This is a Sabbath which deal with creation and then redemption which deal with, you know, buying us out of slavery from the fall of creation. That's what Christ came to do. And so he set it out and by the wisdom of God, as they have already planned, that on the fourth, on the seventh, I mean the eighth day, which talks about new beginning, that after Sabbath was the seventh day, going with the old calendar, and Sunday was the first day, which is the eighth day. And the eighth, as you all know, because I don't know, you, I don't, you know it very well here, stands for new beginning. And so Christ came and established the new covenant on the new beginning. And remember that when man was created, even though they last, yet man was given dominion to take care of the air, the sea, the land, and everything. Which means that all the kingdom, the, the, the animal kingdom were under man. Is that all right? But when man fell, there was nowhere. The devil calculated in such a way to think that let's see how he's going to get it out. But he didn't know that God has his plan B. And when God finally decided that man, you have fallen, I'm going to do something that is unusual. He came and get man clothed because man was naked. And he said, he said I have eaten. He said, have you eaten the fruit? <laughs> it was the wife, the woman that you gave to me that brought that trouble. And since then, there have been shifting blames. The more especially husband and wife, you know that. Uh, when something is wrong, get wrong, you either say, you did it. You are allowed this to happen. But that's the, the thing I'm now talking about. Then God abridged, and it is believed that that skin he got, animals might have been slain. God was the first person to kill an animal. And that blood, that became a bridge to have a bridge between them. And so, to Adam and continue, and the rest of them, uh, uh, Abraham continued with a sacrifice. And then for God to make it so that he could really stand, the Levitical priesthood came. Just to hold brief. Just to hold brief. Like what happened in uh, Egypt when he said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And as you know very well, because you, it's all inside this tabernacle, it is then that this tabernacle was brought forth as they are coming out. And then you see that on top of the uh, lantern, he said, put the blood there. By the size of the wall, uh, of, of, the, of the door, put the blood. When I see the blood, I will pass. And then if you put a perpendicular, a perpendicular from here down, and a horizontal line here, what do you have? You have the cross. You have the cross. So it was a pointer to quote the perfect blood which he has talked about in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, would take place. So that was brief. So all through, there was no enough blood or clean blood 
that could have set man free. So when Jesus came, John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God that taken away the sins of the world. So it is that perfect blood of Christ that has brought that redemption. That is why we don't need any other blood for sacrifice, for our salvation. We don't need it. And the only thing that we will not translate that uh, sacrifice to be sacrifice of praise. We praise him and worship him and, and give him the support of the work of God. That's acceptable. So this is the reason why it seems as if uh, the, uh, Paul, under the anointing of God, was hitting against you know, the other people. No, even when Christ was here, he was having a headache with the Pharisees because they failed to understand his mission and what he came for. But thank God that he did it. And thank God. So, because of that, when he rose on, on Sunday, he became the first pastor of Sunday worship. Do you know that? The Bible tells us that when Mary Magdalene would not allow him to go, and he came, he said, well, go and tell them, my people, my brethren, that I have gone to my father and to your father, that I will show myself to them. It is believed that the blood was not taken into the inner tabernacle in heaven and presented. And indeed, it was accepted. How do we know that it was accepted? The Bible tells us uh, that the anointing of God came upon him. Just like Aaron, the anointing was poured. And as that anointing was poured on him, uh, the extension of that anointing is the day of Pentecost. He ran down to show that he has been approved that his sacrifice has been fully accepted and that you can now have eternal life. Praise the Lord. So that strengthened and he became, the Bible said, the eighth day, he came on the eighth day and had fellowship with them. And when he had fellowship with them, they ate food, they ate bread, they just did everything and they sang a hymn. So Christ for about two or three times, appeared them. He was the first pastor of Sunday service. Some people say, oh, it was Sunday service was enacted by Roman Catholic. Or some people say it was this and that. No, let's keep it. No human being brought Christ out of the grave on Sunday. It was the holy council of God. And then the counsel of God said that this creation, this creation, this redemption, this is a position of redemption, and that our old seventh day is Sunday. That's what God has, uh, I mean, uh, yes, in Revelation chapter 1, is it verse 6 or 7, you say, or verse 10, you say, the Lord's day. Sunday is called the Lord's day. So, don't be or overtaken by any person. You say, if you are worshiping on Saturday, well, I'm watching on, on Saturday. And they will quote and quote. It has a lot in the Old Testament. The Sabbath. The Sabbath has a lot. So the perfection of Christ has perfected everything. And we are complete in him. Praise the Lord. And when he has made a promise, that promise must come to pass. And as I was talking, the Lord has helped me to bring down a lot of books I think one day you will see them. One day it shall be displayed. But there are books, like, let me just say two of such books. One was 1990, when the Lord, uh, when we had uh, uh, um, this people, uh, this just, it was this just, uh, Equa. Equa had problem. They challenged bookshop. They had problem with Amok. And the, the case was brought from there to Calabar. And the case was on and on and on. And finally, he said, judgment is unto the Amok. Okay. 
and the kind of thing that the judge was talking about. One expression that I will never forget. He said, who, who are you, this man, this small man, representing uh, Christianity? He said, you are like a frog. Frog, sit down here. You, you know when the frog sits, <laughs> sit down here? You, you thought he had touched the ground, and then he's making like this. But he don't know how far his legs are from the ground. When a, a flock sits on top of a tree, that that's how Christianity, those of us who are back in Christianity, that don't we know that uh, 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 Mary was uh, an amok? Uh, how okay? Joseph was an amok. So Christ was brought up for that amok. I mean, the judge. I have the judgment. I, it was it was heartbreaking. What do we do? <laughs> there was nothing, and they called rule. Then after that, the Lord said, "Well, I cut the veil. Inya, I'm going to cut the veil, and he cut the veil by making me to write a book that say the silent period of Jesus Christ revealed." The so-called between 12 years and 30. Where was Christ? And the Lord used the scripture and everything to make it very convincing. And since after that, Amok has fallen down. As far as it is that And of course, thank God that as we appeal to to Supreme Court, from, from, we won from the appeal court, from the appeal court, they themselves went to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court still said, look, I'm mock. You people, you are... <laughs> said, that is... Oh, hallelujah. You don't know what we have. The Lord said, you are the light of the world. And they saw. And these people claim to know too much. Yes, it's because when, they lost, when the church lost it, they were now giving them... He said, we train... Catholic uh, uh, priests and a lot of uh, Protestant priests, we give them the secret. But today, God is releasing that secret, his own secret, as he's doing here. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Because we are at the right time. The greatness of God is coming. Praise the Lord. So, then, concerning the move I am talking about, yeah, before then, I wrote another book called Reincarnation. A question started on reincarnation. That was 1992. And that book, since that book came out, you know, a lot of people, there was a man, an Igbo man, an Igbo sharp. When I was marketing the book by myself, then they, I met him in... in uh, 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 a place, an industrial place. And I said, I was marketed, I said, oh. Then the man looked at the boy and said, he said, what are you talking about? I believe in reincarnation. And he, and he make all the noise. I said, it's okay, sir. But just get it now. <laughs> After many, about how many years, when I went to preach, I was invited to preach in full gospel businessmen. The person who dropped me, I didn't know the person, but when the person was coming to drop me, and I said, do you know this man? Do you know? I said, I know, I cannot. He said, that man will argue with you about the book. When I read the book, I came down. I gave my life to Christ. Another person, uh, a lecturer, uh, when he was arguing, he said, look, I believe in this thing. The second edition. I said, it's okay, you get it. When, by the time he read all, he said, I've come down. Now, God is bringing these instructions that will be, you know, because of the kind of men that are going to come. This, this kind of elementary kind of uh, 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 service, this is to this, this and that and that, are not a thing. They want to read about the universe. They want to read about what, what God's wisdom is. And God is raising some of you here and endowing you so that you will write 
and unveil the secret. So don't you think that this thing you are just, is just for something? God is going to raise you up and he's going to anoint you and he's going to open your own area. As you are faithful, you will see. Others will be blessed. Praise the name of the Lord. So, so we see it here. God opened my eyes to see. It was 78. A Yukopa was doing Yuko. And uh, at Yukom, he invited me. But then I was still in my village, Itigidi. He invited me to come and stay with him. And it was in uh, one of the estates. Very lonely. I was writing, I was still writing the books that I was writing. Then one day, many times during that period, the moment I just closed my eyes, I would see vision. Vision would come out. And the thing I said, Lord, these things are not clear. I want something very clear. I will not, uh, I was discussing with her, I said, I'm, I will not close my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. No, when you, when you enter into intimacy with God, it was so wonderful. God is real. He is real. And he knows how to make forms. But holy forms. <laughs> he said, you don't want to close your eyes. It's okay. It's okay. And then, I look at the wall. When I said, look at the wall. And I look at the wall. The wall was not painted. The wall was, you know, village, village house. How it looks like. There were patches of uh, uh, cement here and there. And then I saw just this cloud like this. The whole place was clouded. It was not coming, changing to cloud. And I saw the beautiful uh, uh, eye, I mean, whole became an eye of a baby. The two eyes, and then gradually, the whole place, now the whole thing changed. The scenario is saying, and behold, mighty revival going on. <laughs> it was so amazing. I, I will leave it. I will go and write, write down what I've seen in my memo. And then I will come back again. The thing was so great for that two weeks, things like that. It was going on. And show me Great crowd. One of these, I said, look, Lord, if it is true that this thing is real, it's going to be real. What I want you to do is this. Let this mama crowd raise up their hands. To my greatest amazement, you see, the whole mama crowd raise up their hands. Oh, you see, Inya, do you see that? I said, yes, sir. So, when I talk about the end time, about the move of God, about what God is about to do, I speak with all authority because he has proved it to me. And then it was that, that, this is that uh, map I show you. It was in that, that map belongs to the young man. It was in that place. The bed I was lying, I just sent it, the, uh, the uh, logos, one map was hung there. I didn't study Greek, so I did not really understand what he meant by logo. But in the, in the vision, the Lord first showed me a logo. I didn't really understand it. Until when now he asked me to so open your eyes and look at that map. And when I look, that's physically, as I'm standing, I look at the map, and the whole map, the whole wall was invaded by the mighty outpouring of the Holy Spirit. He said, in the last day, he will do what? He will pour his spirit upon all. It has not come, but it's going to come. And not long from now. We are preparing for that. But as we are preparing, we must be well fed. And I saw, as I was telling my brother, I said, look, I went and looked at uh, Russia area. Because by then, communism was still very strong. And behold, the whole place. And by God's grace, the Lord has given me works that point to that. That show and uh, if they can just screen them, it's okay. It's okay. Now, 
that one, as it is here, this is the traveling. Uh, if you see the map of Africa, on top there, Israel. You see Israel. Israel is there. That's he's talking about Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1 to chapter 12. Israel is there. What happened on the day of Pentecost? The breaking forth, uh, bringing forth of the church. And from there, he moves to Antioch. Antioch, remember when Barnabas took who? Paul to Antioch. And the base shifted to Antioch. And from Antioch, later on, uh, after 1,200 years, he moved to England, oh, to Germany. When you hear about the Great Reformation, how many people have heard about Great Reformation? Uh -huh. It is true that that Great Reformation came up. From there, he moved to England. How many people have heard about Holiness Movement by John Wesley? Uh -huh. So he came there, and later on, he moved to the United States of America. And the United States of America, by 76, there was transition to come to Africa. And this is where we are in Africa. And after Africa, it will go back to Israel. That will now talk about the millennium reign of Christ, which will end the war. Praise the Lord. Now, can you give me the other one so that I can see it? the different shift of God's move? This one, the, the artistic work, so that can, they can see it. the different shift of God's move. Uh -huh. Now, this one, this artistic work of that, uh, if you look at the other one I have shown you, you could see that the whole thing is like, looks like Ferrica. And they say that the wall is Ferrica. Which means to say that the move, each of these moves had a grip on humanity. A grip. The civilization that we're enjoying and all the things, it was a result of the release. That's why we're expecting a new civilization with the release that God is going to release upon Africa. I, I didn't hear amen to that. Amen. <laughs> so, so you, is that that traveling from Jerusalem? Yeah, Jerusalem. I said Jerusalem there. You know, Antioch. Just what I have said: Antioch, uh, Germany, England, United States of America, then Africa. This is where we are, because at the end of it is the rapture of the church, and then coming back after to rescue Israel at their repentance. That's the millennium reign. Praise the Lord. I have about three or four books to that effect that give exposition on that. And then, can you give me, uh, let's take the creation antecedents. Okay. Here, if the, 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 the sister to this is like the other one, that one is called God's clock for humanity. And this one is called creation age and the church age. This is based on Genesis chapter 1 and chapter 2, verse 1 to 2, the seven days. The seven days. And it will interest you to see here, uh, God say, let there be light. And what happened? That's under creation. And then under redemption. Because another word for this would have been creation and redemption. But instead of using the redemption, we are using church age, which covers that. So now Jesus, when he came, we were told that he was born in about 4 BC. Then Christ grew for the 30 years. And the calendar changed. And we began to have AD. There, Christ, when he was in his public ministry, he did not mix words. He said, I am the light of the whole world. Did he say so? Yes, Does that agree with the first day? Yes, Let there be. Light. And Jesus said, I am the light. Yeah, yeah, push it this way. Push it again. Uh -huh. Have you seen it there? That's the cross. What he did on the cross where the light goes. 
comes from to enlighten the world. And it is through this that each one of us has become born again. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And then the second aspect, the second day, God said, let there be a divide. That is to say, the heavens, water in heaven should step there and then down. So there was a divide. The upper casing and the lower casing. And then when you come here, that is under uh, Antioch or Roman. When it comes here, this under the church age, Jesus said to the Pharisees, he said, I am from above and you are from beneath. Is that not the same thing? Yeah. Uh -huh. And they were first called Christian in Antioch. That's the period. That's the divide. So they now a divide of we who are Christ-like, Christ followers in righteousness, we are upper case. And those who are not Christ, they are down, going to hell. May God help unbelievers to become believers in Jesus' name. Amen. And then quickly, the next one, the third one, and then the Lord saw the whole water was everywhere. There was no land. And God spoke to the water. He said, you water, gather yourself into one and then God saw a land and called it earth. And of course, vegetation began to come forth. So, so it is. That's now under Germany. When the church you know, lost its glory and its focus, it came into confusion. And there was dark ages under the Roman Catholicism. There was dark ages. If you dare to speak the truth, they will kill you. Until God, in his own way, decided to not show Martin Luther who came out. And there was separation. Was there separation? And after that separation, what happened? People could not hear the truth. The land for truth to be preached again was preached. Is that okay? Uh -huh. Now go down. Number four. And God said, and God created two lights. The bigger one to rule the day and the smaller one to rule the night. And he created the star also. Is that true? Before now, they have been all attempt to see how to harness. They, they know that there was something, a wave, but they do not know how to harness it. It was during this period, British time, that Faraday, who was not much later, do you know that Faraday was not as later as you are? He was not as so privileged because he was from a very poor family. But one thing, he was a Christian, down to earth. And he, with the assistance I mean, of heaven, he was able to harness, and electricity, electricity became a reality. So that I agree, electricity is equivalent to the sun. Is that all right? So it agrees. Without electricity, we will not enjoy what we are enjoying here. So that becomes the sun. And in that vegetation too, we know that there are four rivers or streams in, in uh, Genesis. Eden. The Bible says that there were gold, there were uh, bellet, minerals, and remember that these things and all these things, it is through these metals that have been formed. So the first industrial work that emerged, it was during that period. And it was called printing press, small printing press, which was uh, 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 yeast. And then the first book to be printed was what? Bible. Praise the Lord. During that period, you see that most of the mercy that we have comes from herbs. Is that right? And from fish. It was then that God opened the understanding because there were a lot of superstitions then that the blood, they will have two kinds of blood in the body. 
It was so strong until the Lord gave the insight. And he said, no, there's no two blood. It is blood circulation. It was during that period and that broke Eve open science and advancement in science. So that I agree with the dating that crossover happened in creation it duplicated in human history. Praise the Lord. And then the number five, God now turned to the waters and said, you water bring out abundantly what? Creations. And he made the whales. And then he said, bring forth fowls, that's birds, that will occupy the heavens. That was American Christianity, what we tag there as American Christianity. And the periods are there. Then, if you look at it very carefully, this was the first time that men were able to overcome, to create this uh, ocean uh, uh, vessels and control. And not only that, the two brothers, the two white brothers, who were uh, uh, basical repairers, they were endowed with such a wisdom that gradually they were able to bring the first aeroplane. And from there, it has been everywhere. Is that not wonderful? That's agree on the fifth day. Then on the sixth day, where we are now, that's African time. On the sixth day, that's African time, that talks about dominion. Quote, dominion. And God gave man dominion over creation. And of course, you all know that indeed, technologically, we have got it. This is dominion. Is that not dominion? You sit down here and put crack, 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 someone so far away. Oh, football is going on. And at the same time, all of us, those who are football lovers, how many of them here, they will say, go! Everyone is kicking. Everywhere in the world, they are kicking at the same time. Why? Dominion over creation. Dominion over creation. And other things. Then, what is really waiting for is the church must enter her own dominion over creation. And that is why this move is going to be wonderful. Who has not been shaken by the advancement of science? Technology. Is there anyone? So the whole world will be shaken by the move that we are about to encounter. God has said it. He has convinced me beyond every range of doubt. Other people have their own history, you know, on how God has dealt with them concerning this. Concerning, like, you are guest, uh, uh, the visitor of uh, our brother. I was missing with her for the first time together, but when we were sharing, you know, God gave her another way of handling that thing that I'm handling in his, her own way. And God gave me this. So all of them marrying together. And then you have pastor also. So God is doing wonders. It's just wonders. And then the last one, which is the seventh day. All these follow the creation. The passages are there. Follow the creation. Uh, they say. And on the seventh day, we have the rest. And God rested on the seventh day. Is that all right? They shall be rest. After the millennium, uh, after the, uh, the this when Israel shall repent, Christ will come with the church. But then the church had been glorified to reign for 1,000 years. 1,000 years. There are some Christians who don't believe in it and they want to build. I'm, I'm not here for argument. But I know that it is real. God has showed it to me. And not only that, he has helped me to put them down. These things, they are peculiar. It has never been the first time of releasing this, this secret that is releasing. But it's not for me, it's for all of us. So that when we believe, what we are believing, we are believing with authority. No uh, at, at taste. 
No, how do they call them? Agonists. How do they call them? Philosophers. What course of they are? They can't withstand this. They cannot withstand this to show how creation antecedent controls human history. Praise the name of the Lord. I think at this point in time, I want to rest here, sir. Oh, this is just one hour. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, beloved, we are not beating about the bush. We are talking things that are concrete. Things that are real. When the Lord, during that period, he took me into a journey. I don't know what I bother you, as Brother Paul would say, or, 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 or spirits are out of body. I don't know. He took me first. Took me to the star, one of the stars. Took me, then we moved to the moon. And then the one that I was so embarrassed, I could not withstand, was the sun. And with his hand, with this kind of cloth here, but B was showing me the layers and this and that. I struggled out of myself. I struggled out. And only to find myself on earth. I say, when I came, I said, oh, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the immaturity that I could not withstand to hear your lecture. Please, Lord, don't forgive me. Please, Lord, open me up to another one. And God, in his mercy, he did. After about a week or under two or three weeks, this one, this time around, was creation. He took me to the Garden of Eden. And as I stood in that garden, I heard release as when he when he command. You just hear as if it is thundering. I mean, it's just so fear. And it come to be. And things like that. So it was on and on and on. Then after that, he now took me to where the different and where he, he, the assembly of the human past, they were pulled as if they were molded and kept. And then the one he showed me, he, he, he carried this lap and showed me that, yes. And then he hear, back up. He just entered and took this one and showed me, I said, yes. And he put it again, he said, back up. And the thing stand. So after that, the next thing I saw, what I saw a man, not from their coming. Say, that's Adam. That's Adam. How I created him. I said, wow. This is amazing. This is wonderful. God, you are real. You are real. So, when we talk about the Bible, we are not beating about the bush. We are talking realities. You see, seek ye out of the book of the Lord. He said, none of these shall do what? Fail. Nor one have made us have one fulfillment. It cannot. And then, when the Lord was ministering to me here, he said, my mouth has commanded it. And his spirit has gathered I want to explain to you there. You know, if you open to Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 to verse 17 and 18, it talk, talk about Timothy, young Timothy, how he was brought up from his childhood. He was brought up, you know, he was taught of the scripture from his childhood. And his grandmother happened to be a Christian. The mother, uh, Eunice, was a Christian. And so, God, uh, uh, having his own way, he was a Christian. And he was taught by the scripture. This Bible 
Let me know this is not Bible. The Bible you are holding. Beloved, there's no other book. Physics book, textbooks. In those days when we were students now, when you know uh, you'll be proud of holding your physics and all this and work. Oh my god. And then when it is Bible, it's you keep it there. Oh my God. But as one <laughs> grew up, as we grew, that discovered that there's no book like the Bible. Not even the medical textbooks. There's no book like the Bible. Then he talk about the logic books. There's no book like the Bible. It is God inspired. That's the shortest language. And anything he said he would do, he would do it. Consider it done. Even though it may be slow, as if it will never come to pass. But certainly, slow and steady with the rest. It will come to pass. And so Timothy, if you look at Timothy very carefully, you discover that Timothy, among all the children, Timothy was so drained, drilled by Paul, and had messages, was on the head of Timothy. Read First Timothy, Second Timothy. Like some of perhaps the hard messages you may be hearing here, which may not be very common. Without that hard, if you don't, as I've said, if your bones are weak, will you be able to walk? You need strong bones, strong skeleton to be able to achieve. And that comes through strong meat. And so the Bible tells us here yeah, that when Timothy was growing, he now remains the mouth of the Lord has spoken it to It is God's inspire. It is not man's book. It is God's book. If you read history of the Bible, people have died, though. people have suffered to keep this Bible, to, to make this Bible, because there was time you don't even see. Who are you to see Bible in those days? Because they wanted to bury it. But God, and today, every man, every child, you have Bible. Why don't you read it? Why don't you study it? If you study it, you will see the benefit. You will see the benefit. Praise the Lord. So, here the Bible tells, tells us, that it is for doctrine. It is for teaching, instruction. And all aim at building up. Building up. When you read the Bible in the way you ought to read it, you are not going to be crawling. A lot of people are crawling. As uh, tortoises, Christian tortoises. I hope they know there's no Christian thought here. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But the Bible, when you read it and study it, it gives you muscles. It builds you up. And you're not afraid. Afraid of what? Afraid of persecution? Who is the devil? Who, who is he? And then the Bible will make you to be focused. I thank God for what God is even doing here in the gifting of the Holy Spirit, the release. I'm so jealous about it. I want to say it, you know, and I want you to keep it up. Don't relent. And the Bible will shape in you. What's our vision, what's our prophecy, you know, it must be in line with the word. Everything comes, it must be shaped by the word. And that's very, very important. Because it's the last book. It's the first book in your life and the last book in your life. That's the Bible. He has done so much for me as a person. And he will do it to as many that are ready for it. And I am so glad that the way your attention is so focused and so taken, it means that great things are happening and are going to happen in your life. Because he said, he that cometh unto the Lord must, what? must believe that he is and reward diligently. When I look at, I take a view, 
I see that diligence in you. May God help every one of us in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. There are some places you will be doing, and then the other people will be chewing chewing gum. The other person will be discussing with another person, and some people will be sleeping. But I don't see that kind of spirit here. Praise the Lord. The atmosphere is lively and charged. I am glad about it. Let's give an applause to the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And that is because a vessel accepted to yield himself. Because God must pass through vessel. So if Pastor Ita Udo did not, we would not have been gathering here. Yes, sir. Uh, is that right? Yes, sir. So we must also give applause to Pastor. Give applause now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Uh, yes, God is a serious-minded person, but that seriousness does not mean that you must be look, you look very miserable. Always, you look miserable. No, 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 no. <laughs> That's not how I go. Oh, Paul said, rejoice! And again, I said, God, Rejoice. Yeah. And Paul was languishing, if we want to use our language, languishing in, in a court. Prison. But he said, rejoice. And he said, and again I say, rejoice. Oh God. That the Lord may open you to the reality of Christianity, of whom Christ is. When, when that reality comes into you, there's nothing. You cannot say why Paul says, all that I have, all that I know, I I, I can't it but done. Because of the excellency. And in recent time, I was just having a view. And I look at it. Tell me one word that is of such great importance to humanity that that word is not stolen from the Bible. Tell me. Tell me. You see, your excellency. Where do you get that your excellency? <laughs> Are you getting me there? Where do you get it? An ambassador. Where do you get it? <laughs> Just give me one word. Justice. Where do you get the justice? Everything has stolen from the word of God. And then you, you think that I was holding the Bible. I'm an inferior person. How do you think that I'm inferior? When you are coming to steal my own, from my own source. And go and amplify it and do all the nonsense I'm doing. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank God because the hour has come. And I say this with every sense of responsibility. One of the things that I'm happy here is that this is an enlightened society. This elite. Elite society. And they are bundles of gifts and areas that God wants to use you. The hour has come in Nigeria that Christians should take up our educational uh, 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 write-up. The literature department, people that were once so, uh, so in car, you see the, the damage that man did. He's the man who came and promoted court, court and swept the whole of the universities. Until today, God is still very, very powerful. Single man. Because, uh, and he believed that his God is, uh, how is uh, the God of the thunder. Shango? So Shango gave him all the wisdom. If Shango could use Wing, Wing Shoinka, so, would the God Almighty not use somebody here eh, to do greater, constructively greater? His own leads to destruction. And it goes to her. God is ready to give you wisdom to challenge this whole thing that they have wisdom. Or they have knowledge and all that. No, 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 no. God is waiting for you. 
Yes, the profession that you are is good. Learn it and hold it. But God may change you to another in accordance to his purpose. And when he does, release. At the beginning, it may not be, you know, very, very, very smooth. But hold to it. If you are sure that this calling, this thing I'm involved in, is God who has spoken to me. You must be convinced. And when you are convinced, I tell you, and you keep the principle, you obey the law, and do the little you can do, the law will see you through. And great things will begin to happen. Praise the name of the Lord. People like, uh, how's it called? Uh, the, the, the author of things fall apart. You know that man did his own destruction. Very powerful and promote Africa traditional culture. And promote it. May God help us. Amen. We need men and women that will, of God that will come and challenge those things. Write things that the government or whosoever, that the law place people that will approve it for schools. For schools. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I discover one thing that this devil, this devil is so deceptive. He's so deceptive to those who are doing or with the science or who are doing science. Throw out your primary or your secondary school and the university and that. They will never, you will never see any scientist that they will attach his background that is a Christian. You will never. They hide it because the basic Science and the principle were discovered by Christians. Christians were everywhere, but they would draw that thing, throw it away, and only say, Well, this is science, no religion, no religion here. This time. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. And now they feel that they have the right to, de to dethrone, in quote, God. How can God be dethroned? I, I think you know that there was. In uh, Germany, something happened some years ago when they said that uh, uh, God, their own God, not my own God, they built a uh, constructed uh, casket and they carried their own God. In the, These religious people, and they will say that we're going to bury God. You have never read something like that? If you search, you will see it. May God help us in Jesus' name. God is God. He will never change. So his word will make you to be as bold as a lion. But if you are empty, there's no, the word is not there. The power of the anointing is not there. You will be shy. When the judge, even a fly going out, you will be afraid. But the Bible says, Jesus said that, little flaw. It is your father's good will to do what? To give you the kingdom. So if you are to know the, to have the kingdom, then you must know the world. You must be familiar with the truth, the course of heaven. Through praise and worship and prayer, you must be sold out to him. All out. I get challenged by the Europeans. Yes, they do a lot of evil, but those who sell themselves out, they will sell themselves all out. And God used them. Can you imagine uh, uh, John Wesley? By the time John Wesley came on board, England or Great Britain was even worse than the state of Africa and Nigeria today. No, this was very advanced in terms of wickedness. In terms of drunkenness, in terms of my treating of human beings, their fellow human beings, it was terrible. There was so much drunkenness in England 
that a street alone, you have just like what I try to have churches here, and but there are more than that. In one street, you have up to 10. And some people will put a label. He say, drink and be drunk. There's a bed here. <laughs> to, to sleep. <laughs> I mean, in England. In England. And the kind of uh, kidnapping and uh, 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 killing. Once it is six, you can't move. You can't move out. There was slavery. And then the maltreating of women, even in the, in the uh, 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 prison, prison was so bad that there were some places in prison that the water cannot even go. Because if you enter there, they will kill you. The criminals there will kill you. So they will not go. It was as bad as that. But when the gospel, when this young man, they were young, Shalfin, no, Josh Whitefield was 21 years old. He was the youngest clergy that Anglican has ever produced. When he would wear that robe, just a young man and going, people would come out to look at him. He was very young, very handsome. Some people think that when you become handsome or beautiful, you should use it for the devil. But thank God for David. He said, I am wonderfully and fearfully. So, I, I know that your faces are very bright and handsome, so it should be used for God's glory. So, this young man was handsome. He was about 21. Uh, uh, Charles was about 30. And John Wesley was about 35. And they were all members of Anglican. And then the aspect of John Wesley then, they were, they refused to follow their parents to the other, they would want to belong to England, I mean to England idol called Anglican. So they belong. So by the time they finish education, and by the time God in his mercy had mercy on them, and they became born again, and they received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the power of God came. The, the story tells us that they were about 60, and they were just gathered like this. And as they were gathering in that night worship, after a love feast of eating bread and things like that, as they were just gathering, as they were just praising God, the heaven opened. And the power of God came mightily upon them. You see, they found, all of them found themselves on the ground. They cannot explain. And after a while, by the time they stood ground, say all of them sang one song that the Holy Ghost gave them. I've forgotten the song. I cannot remember it. All of them just sang that one song. And after that, these three key people, they sat down and said, ah, something's about to happen. God has a plan for this nation. And they were now thinking and reasoning and reasoning. But when that thing came upon them as they were, you know, religious spirit, the Anglican people, they were preaching and they preaching. And one of them preached and told, and then told the, when uh, John Wifey was preaching, he told the overall person, he said, look, this man is causing uh, people to become mad. He said, hey, how? By the preaching? He said, let there be more mad now, more and more people in the church. But very soon, the Anglican people said, no, we can't, we can't stop more this thing. And the carriage on Wesley said, Wait, open that window, open that window. And they threw him, said, Go away. <laughs> the carriage would have through, said, Go. And all and all. And this young man, they did not know what to do. John Wesley was almost confused. But thank God, Joshua Field, who is considered to be the greatest field preacher, evangelist, a man that will stand. And before him, 30,000 all over the place. 
He was not using mic because there was nothing like mic. But when he, when he opened his mouth, everywhere, they were hearing him. Is that ordinary? That's supernatural intervention. They were hearing him. And the power of God, they began to preach. Then to show you how thick these people were in wickedness. They would prepare a rotten uh, egg, everything rotten, everything ugly, as they are, as they are preaching, they are preaching on the preacher. As it happened like that in Nigeria, it has not come to that point. All kinds of things on them. They, they fought these people, but they stood their ground. They continued to preach and to love. And John Wesley continued to write to enlightenment. Yeah. At last, the power of God break the Eve. And by the time John Wesley died, before he died, any time John Wesley bring out his itinerary of where to go, the whole of that side, the whole of that place, the school children will stand on the road. And all men and everyone will come to welcome John Wesley and to bar. Because John Wesley, they did great work. Delivered them. That French Revolution, you are hearing, it would have started in England before that. And Voltaire, how many people know Voltaire here? I hope the philosophers are here. Voltaire, who was all, all, he said, look, he started his own. He re to rewrite history. And by the time he finished, the Bible will be closed. Ah, Voltaire. And teach all kinds of things. Hmm. But when that French Revolution came and people began to kill and kill and kill, Voltaire ran away from France and went to England where there was peace to go and hide. <laughs> but you are preaching all the things you are preaching talking against the Bible and here you are but John Wesley shall, uh, uh, George Whitefield shall Wesley and the rest preach the gospel not with God just as I'm preaching they preach Christ they practice the life and England was transformed and became great Britain it was transformed and everywhere, peace begins to reign. That's the power of the gospel. Let's not think that Nigeria is too bad that it cannot be retracted back. God is going to do it in the name of Jesus. Let them do what they are doing. But that is not the issue. The issue is that God is waiting for you and me. That's all. God is waiting for you. And can you imagine uh, uh, Philip? Who was not an ordained apostle, so to say. He was not called an apostle, but he did not care about it. He knew that he has him. And there's something great in him. And when the persecution came so mightily, what happened? He said, he went to where? Samaria. And what did he do? He preached Christ. Simple gospel. He preached Christ. And that preaching alone, God began to do great things. That even the, the, the mystical, the sacred mystic that was reigning, who was considered as the power of God, he bowed down. He said, I surrender. I gave his life. There's nothing as powerful as the gospel. Preach by holy men in the power of the Holy Ghost. There's nothing. It's the gospel that transforms humans. And when humans are transformed, then activities everywhere will be transformed and impacted. That is what the gospel is. is. And, and those of you who are in schools, who are teachers, lecturers, you know, you have a lot. You just have a lot. That's why God must build you up. You can cause a revolution in the school. And things will happen. He said you are the light of the world. A city that is set on the hill cannot be healed. Let your light so shine before that they may do what? See your good works 
Hallelujah. Who is that man that said, and what would it be like? Leave me. I don't need light. Who is that person? Light. Let it happen that it will just off this light. You see commotion here. You will not say anything. Is that not right? He say you want to do without light, as some people are saying. Oh, it's a pity. It's just a pity. Sinners need to be pitied. And God must imbue in us that heart of compassion with his love. Nobody will think that he cannot do without life. Physically, as a night, it may be so, but it's not true. In eternity, it cannot be. Jesus said, I am the light. And nobody can come to the Father except by that stands out. Forget about philosophy, forget about argument, forget about this thing. You have the answer. As, uh, when, when, when Jesus had spoken hard truth and the people left him, he turned to the apostles, to the disciples, said, will you also go? <laughs> Peter said, to whom shall we go to? You have. When you have Christ, you have gotten it all. There's no regret about it. You have gotten it all. And it is so wonderful, most of you are young people, to have gotten Christ now. I know of an old man, you know, who was converted in a ministry and learned, I mean, uh, just at the, at, when he was about, is he 60 or something, 70 years old, it was too late for him. So what was I doing all this? He was in America, he was this and that. Oh God. When Christ genuinely comes to your life, he makes a world of change. He makes you to know, oh, not to have him, you have missed, you missed a lot. But not to have him is wonderful. So below, the scripture is to build us up, is to reconstruct us. And in our uh, uh, pursuit, we must pursue it according to principles. Principles are very essential. If you don't rule, rule, I mean, wrong according to the principle, you will be disqualified. Just like what's happened to Atlas. Everyone must warn. And brother, uh, let's read it from uh, Joel. Joel chapter 2. I love that scripture. About the end time. Joel chapter 2. Oh, praise the Lord. And let's read from, let's read from before, read from verse 4. A fast reader can read. Down, yes. They have the appearance of horses. They gallop along the, like cavalry. With a noise like that of chariots, mm -hmm. they leap over the mountain tops, like a crackling fire consuming stubble, yes. like a mighty army drawn up for battle. That's right. At the sight of them, nations are in anguish. That's right. Every face turns pale. They charge like warriors. They skill like they skill walls like soldiers. Amen. They all march in line, That's not right. swerving from not their swerving. course. Yes, go ahead. They do not jostle each other. That's right. Each marches straight ahead. Mm -hmm. They plunge through defenses without breaking ranks. Yes. They rush upon the city. They run along the wall. Mm -hmm. They climb into the houses like thieves. They enter through the windows. Before them, the earth shakes. Mm -hmm. The heavens tremble. The sun and moon are darkened and the stars no longer shine. That's right. The Lord thunders at the head of his army. Right. His forces are beyond number. Mm -hmm. And mighty is the army that obeys his command. 
the, the day of the Lord is great. It is dreadful. Who can endure it? Let's stop there. Praise the Lord. You see, the weaknesses of Pentecostalism that is going, we are emerging out of that. What God is saying here, is this the end time army which is made of you sitting down here? And he said, unnecessary uh, bitterness of heart, gossip, uh, stamp, uh, uh, backing, I mean, uh, 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 by biting and uh, stamp. <clears throat> it will not be there. Every person is focused. You know, you are, you are moving your cars. And when something happens that will stop, all of you will fall and not warn you, and you go. So, and the speed will be great. There's going to be powerful invasion of, of countries. All these things that say uh, they have prohibited uh, Christianity not to be here. Let them wait. Let the Muslim wait. We are coming. The Lord is sending us. Read that and read it again and read it again on your own. That is, that is the style. That is the spirit in which we are going. And God is going to come in different ways. You know, in your profession, God is going to turn it out. Of what you are doing is God will use it as a tool for this great army. And by the time we finish, hey, let me give you a, a, a recent happening that happened to me. It was a vision. As I was writing a type of an old uh, manuscript dealing on this, then as I was typing it, that very one, I came to a particular page and it was knighted. That was 19th of August. And uh, I slept. In the dream, I was shown two great men of God who have been fathers of Pentecost or Pentecostal. And then one of them was so highly respected and has command because of his uprightness. As the other person has a little malfunction of uh, sexual uh, defilement. At least it has been rumored, not once, not twice, about him. And because of that, his, 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 uh, uh, his fame is deflated. Not everything holds him as high as the other person. All of them they are advanced, they are advanced in age. Then, in that prophetic dream, this particular one who has some moral uh, yes, then he was on top of the bird. He was lying on top. Why? I was lying below. The, in that environment, announcement was made. And that announcement was that this man is dead. So oh, all of us were just contemplating, ah, this man is dead. This man is dead. Then just of a sudden, I heard a whistling, very strong whistling as it were, of a mighty wind that came upon the person who was on top and he was flung, flung down, head down to the floor. You just heard the sound. And from all indication, you know that when such a thing happened, the person's head will scatter. But as we watch, instead of the person's head scattering, we saw him, he sprang back. Ah, very, very energetic and powerful. We look at him, he was radiating with glory. And then he said, I thank God for forgiving my sin. God has for forgiven me. And he, he told him, he said, I'm going to walk with you. 
Yes, I'm going to walk with you. So we were all all following him behind because of the kind of glory. He became younger and not only becoming younger, the glory was so glittering. When when he opened his mouth, he releases dynamis. Dynamis. Yes. He released lightning and power. You can't withstand. Anywhere he goes, the city will, will be, you know, so shaken. And the glory, at times, as I was watching, at times, the glory will come, then he'll come out and you see him coming out of the glory. Moving. Wow. He was so swift, moving. I said, when I woke up, I said, what does this mean, Lord? Then the Lord made me to understand. What I was writing, that page, was talking about this great army. So now the Lord opened me to say that's the demonstration of the great army. That the church is weak and compromising. He see, but is going to cause those whom he has elected, who are, their head will be knocked to the ground and scatter so that all those nonsense mentality will go away. <laughs> as to have the mind of Christ and we shall spring forth and then you see God honoring his word when, he's, when you speak uh, things will happen because as at that point God has dealt with everyone humility is the language no matter how God may use you and how God must give you whatever, you are not going to depend on materialism. You are depending wholly on him and you will be humble. After all, it is not your own thing. It's only God that has decided to use you. Then why do you, are you boastful? Why are you proud? As if you didn't receive it. So, because God forgave this man, and use him. I say, I have courage. No matter what I'm seeing, God is working out. His own. They are dotted here and there. We have a cluster of them here, as I'm seeing. We have others whom you don't see. Dotted all over. And the Lord, as the hour is approaching, the trumpet shall sound. And you see yourself meeting there, speaking the same thing. And dealing with iniquity and the power of sin and the power of, of African demons, they will bow. They will be falling down. It is not dealing with the Europeans are dealing with it. It is the African sons, the owner of the land that are dealing with it. They say, enough is enough. You must get out of our land. We we'll send you out because our people must be free. Africa must stand on her feet. There's going to be a release of creativity. I've written much about that. I've talked much about that. Creativity from all angles. Creativity on how to make money, but in a righteous way. How to manage human beings in, in, in government and everywhere. God is going to do it. And God is doing it. Because that's why the head must be hit to scatter. And for the Lord to put the mind of Christ in us as to cooperate. But remember, when the, the, there's something wrong here that someone won't, if you let's take, you, are, you, are, you want to bow your head and you go, and then the Baba who wants to put your, his finger, this in there, he, he, he do like this. Will you, will the Baba be able to do it? He must cooperate with the Baba. So we must cooperate with God by his demands. And when we cooperate, we'll see things happen. You will enjoy God. Do you know that you, you can enjoy God? You enjoy God. He's not a, 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 a tax master that is always with Koboko as religious has taught us. 
on your back. No. You come to a point that you walk, you walk with him and you discuss. And you discuss. And you discuss. I, 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 there was a program last week I attended and the preacher man was preaching and he, he gave this illustration which perhaps I may want to give. It may help somebody. You see, there was a man in in uh, Ibadan and he said that this story is not a fake story, it's something that is, was real. He knows it well. That this man has been in ministry for so long and he, he seemed not to have made it in the way he ought to have made it. So one day he decided to go to the mountain. You know, in the West, the people go to mountains. They have mountains they go to. Do we have mountains here? Uh-huh. They go to, he went to mountain to fast and to pray. And when he climbed up, he, he told God that he has come to, and God says, okay, uh, when you pray, this, this is the prayer I'm going to pray. Pray and say, God, open my eyes to know whom I am. Is it is what? You <laughs> say, when you pray, pray and say, God, open my eyes to know whom I am. Is that all? He said, yes. And he started praying. And he prayed. And then he was taken into trance. And as he was taken into trance, in that trance, he saw an angel of the Lord that came down from heaven. And there was a man that he met. And the man was seems to be so well-dressed with Agbada and everything that showed that the man was a man with a command. He has a command over his situation, over his this. And the angel was talking with him and they talk and laugh and go joyfully. So when he, he himself was just standing one corner there looking, looking at them, and then the angel told the man, said, let me go and Excuse me, let me go and talk with this man. So he went to the man and talked. After talking with the man, he left back. And then he was still coming. Then the Lord now turned to the man and said, uh, Do you know that man? He said, No, I don't know him. He said, You don't know the man? Look at the man very well. He said, I don't know him. He said, That's you. That's you. You fail to utilize the thing that belongs to you. You know, many times we put limitation to ourselves. At times, we become too humble, more than God, or too holy, more than God. You get it? Because we must get balance. You see? And because of that, the thing that belongs to us, we don't get it. And it too, the man was now with me, and God told him, well, your yeah, days are up you you are going. And two years after that, he was taken home. May it not happen to any of us. The thing that belongs to you, you must utilize it. You must know it and command it. We need money. I want you to note it. We need money because without money, you can't move to anywhere. It is money apart from the anointing that God and the word that we have it is money that will take you. It is possible, like what in those days that I talk about this uh, Yoruba man, that he came to a point, a man that can pray for 24 hours, or is it 72 hours? He prayed and prayed and prayed. People who go and come back, he was still praying and praying. That's not ordinary. It's God. It's God. It's not ordinary. And when it is time, when he started to shoot out, he would get himself ready and the people that are uh, about to go, the next thing you see that without transport, without anything, he appeared, they appeared where they are going to preach. And that's all about it. Like what happened to Peter, I mean to Philip. God is going to do that to some people. But that's not going to be conventional. Everybody. But if it, is where, if it were possible, it would have been better. But we still need money to enter plane, pay for 
aeroplane fees. Is that, is that right? Money to pay for the house. Money to train your children. Because not because you're a missionary or this and that, then your children will not go to school. We must need it. We need the money. So the money must be properly utilized. And so it must be properly gotten. You don't hustle the money. When God has blessed you, don't go and, and carry that money and put it in the bank, in their millions. What are they doing there? Bring them out and sponsor this work. Sponsor the work. That is what the kind of mind. We are not to build kingdom for ourselves. Because when you build all the things you build, when you die, will you go with those things? No. And if there's no record in heaven for you, you have lost it. But if you have properly invested it, then when you go, you know that you have invested. The end time move needs money. But we will not get it in, in the kind of shabby way that people are getting money. It must be in a righteous way. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The Lord will prosper you. That is why, like those whom God will cause to write books that will you know, invade our schools and this and that. You know, you make money. Money comes from good authors. When the school system I mean, it takes your works, you make good money in there, claim money that will help sustain your family and also sponsor the gospel. So this is very, very necessary. You should have that at the back of your mind. So we are in that great army. In that great army. And the army that is aligned together, we are agreeing, we are moving together. Together. It's not because we are not in the same, under the same roof that we are enemies. No. The moment you meet, by the time you open your mouth and talk, before the, there's a link up. There's a link up. They know, oh, we are saying the same thing. Oh, we are in the same frequency. And that pushes us up. Below, God will do it. As God helped England to become great England, so shall it be. There have been prophecy, prophecy upon prophecy concerning Nigeria. The Nigeria will be so lifted up in such a way that every black man all over the world, just like what they are doing to America, before you will die, say, I must visit Nigeria. I must visit Nigeria. You, they will come to Nigeria to learn righteousness. Yeah. These are the things that God has spoken and it cannot be diminished. Hallelujah. Amen. And I tell you, to God be the glory. I would like to stop here so that I will listen to those songs you normally sing. <laughs> Thank you, sir. God bless you, sir. Let the word of God dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with blessing your heart to the Lord.
Thank you so much. Sir. Are you blessed? Yeah. <laughs> you heard him start preaching some of what we shared last, yeah. the last meeting. Um, he that comes to the Lord must believe that he is. It was my sermon on Sunday, our last meeting here. And he's the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And uh, maybe in the future, God will give us more opportunity. There will be times uh, you would just like to ask questions. Okay? But these questions will be about anything and everything, whether you spoke about it or not. <laughs> about anything they think <laughs> there's an opportunity <laughs> to... No, use this one. So, um, no, sit down, sir, please. <laughs> you can answer from there. We are accustomed to sitting and talking. You know, as I was listening, now you heard the word. If I may ask, let me start. Yes. You, you talked about seeing those two uh, older servants of God. Yes. Now, you just saw the one that seemed to be known for integrity. You just saw him. That's all. Nothing more. But this one that looked like he was deficient was the one that the power of God was on mightily. Nothing more was said about the other one. Just that out of the options, this and that, the one that would have seemed less qualified was the one who, after receiving forgiveness, received the mercy. That's it, Abby. Yeah, uh, from my understanding, you see, looking at the state of things in the church, yes, sir. the church seemed defeated. Yes, I understand. Yes, and uh, the other components of the human beings are making it. So here, uh, what the Lord is trying to tell us is, is that he say, it's not that the other man whom God yes. is using is, was not accepted. Yes. But he's, he say, I will build my church. Yes. And the gates of her shall not. So, as at the time, that man who was not representing God's purpose, where? It seemed as if the church had been defeated. But God said, no. When the church repent, yes. as the church repent, yeah. he's going to turn it around. Hallelujah. And that was how when he came back, he thanked God for forgiving him. Yes. That he has heard his prayer. Yeah. So this is the, the bottom line. Yes. That God is waiting for you and I Yes. To tell him, sorry, Lord, yeah. for this, for that, our hands off. Do your way, and it will take us through. And that's exactly what I was looking for. So, you know, actually, we um, the Day of Atonement, by Friday, we should be, you know, by the sin calendar and all that. Um, today, tomorrow, Friday. And I, and I you know, I, we had said in our last meeting, last Wednesday that everyone should, um, you know, go and put things in order, repent, and this is important to remind those who have forgotten or some of you are not here, that, you know, we had a, a time. By Friday, we'll be in the face of the Lord all night. <clears throat> it's very important you heard that word. God, Jesus came for sinners. Where sin did abound. Grace did much more. And you know how we've explained that thoroughly. You know, that it's like, as the sin increases, the grace increases. But more than the sin. Yeah. That's the power of God and his willingness. But what is it that often makes people disqualified and become a story that was told? What makes it said, you see that one fell? You see, from the time they fell, hmm, there was no need. It's not because their sin knocked God off balance and God went, oh, oh, no, you have done what has never been done before. It is because someone refused to repent. It's because someone refused to say, in spite of me, God can do mighty things through me. Like Samson, without eyes, who had gotten himself in all that trouble. But he still spoke to the Lord and said, please. And God did greater things as he was passing away than even when he was alive. And that's 
something very important to know. Now, let me see if there are hands with other questions. You have questions arising from something he may have said or something he may have not said. But in your heart, because for me, I wrote it down that when we go home, I'll ask him. I hadn't told him about questions and answers, but things that I feel that, you know, we've talked about. Sometimes we talk about here, you know, and I wonder, I wish there was someone that knew more. In fact, I'll ask one again. I won't be selfish. Um, do you hear him say what um, Victoria Renze said about... Uh, what was the exact phrase he used? There's something. What was it? There's something he said. Ah, dear God. It was here and it, it slipped. Um, maybe I'll remember. But strong meat, that's what he said. Do you hear him talk about strong meat? Do you hear him talk about strong meat? Now, so you should take that. That's two witnesses. It's time to move on to solid food. It's time to move on to solid food. Whatever you think you've had, you need solid food. And then, of course, don't be proud. Don't be proud. It's not wrong to be righteous and have integrity or a name for integrity. But when you have a combination of humility that comes from being forgiven, most people God has used greatly. Back to that dream. Most people God has used greatly are people that had terrible falls. I'm saying this with care because some, of, some people are so foolish. That they actually go to try and fall so they can qualify for great use. Um, you know I'm 100% serious. Some of you have been trying. To, you're, you have a spirit of stupid or something. You know. Listen to me. You're warned. You may not come back. I'm, you've been warned, of course, in the past. Yeah, just, just yes, sir. Please, go ahead. That. There was something this happened in the 70s. Hmm. A girl... I was brought up, the father were pastors, I know, brought up morally good and things like that. But when she became a student, you know, in the gathering, people would give testimony how they committed sin, how they did that, how they did that. And today, the laws have changed. And to her, she has no testimony. These people are giving all this testimony. I don't have testimony. And foolishly, she didn't let somebody know she went into this kind of loose life. And unfortunately, she died. Went and aborted and she died. Okay, so I'm going to clarify what he said in case you didn't hear him. So someone did that thing with a spirit of stupid that I just talked about. <laughs> the person went, uh, I have not seen. All these people are testifying. So let me go and taste sin so I can have a testimony. And didn't come back. That's he this, told this, it. Whenever I remember that, I, I, I get dreaded. You it's knew terrible. her? No, that, her I didn't part. know her. Okay, but, person, but it was, you know, that commonly time, told. Commonly told. Say, this happened. This caught us up. And she died in her sin. Yes. And that's, that's a reality. Why? Because the Bible calls her being willfully ignorant. That's like, right. You know, uh, other people hit you, and she's so patient. He, she doesn't react. Then you pop it. Let me go and hit her my own. You know, and the person had count, had said, the next time anybody, <laughs> and you're the one. <laughs> Boom. The cup gets full as you add your drop, and here you are saying, "Why, eh, but God, are you partial?" And it's not partiality. Okay, so that's very important, and I believe it's actually a specific word for someone. So don't take it lightly at all. God is going to take the church. He, as he said, he saw it representing. The church, yes. you know, representatives of the Pentecostal move of God, but he saw that as that was thrown and they say he's dead, God went, no, the God of resurrection said, I'm going to resurrect. Now, if you link that to the thing about Africa being the last place where the power yes. of God is going to move before the return of the Lord and the establishment of his throne, you can understand yes. that there's something significant. You know, and yesterday he, he said something. He said this. He said that there's a move coming in Africa and that he has been kind of, I don't, I'm, I'm not even asking for him to say more on it, except he wants to. But he said it before we even had any real discussion. I had just talked to him, but he, I didn't instigate this. He said, that move will have a major launching pad from Nigeria. And in Nigeria, it will have a major launching pad from Aqua Cross. He said it. Aqua Ibum, Cross River. Have we seen things ripple out from 
over the years. We need to find those words so we can share them with him. But he said this, and of course he struck me very hard. Because for those that have been here, we've had words from years ago that showed things happen from a quiet boom state out. And we used to wonder, what's the big deal? I mean, a quiet boom state. People came here to school. They said their brothers put Uyo for jam. And they said, where is Uyo? They thought it was in Kwara State. <laughs> but just like Bethlehem, Ephrata. That's right. Might be very small, insignificant. But God, I've told you guys years ago, Pa Elton is said to have said, he said they will create a new state. Akwaibum did not exist. He said it will be the richest. In case you don't know, Akwaibum State collects the largest allocation from oil and also Before the state existed, he said it. Now that should, but it could also represent spiritual riches too. So I think it's something you should, you should consider it a very great honor. If you're from out of state and you came to Uyo or Kwaibum and you're going back, bye-bye, sorry. <laughs> sorry. You should have joined us. <laughs> but I know God is going to do great things. Maybe when, uh, if we can get our sister, uh, you know, the woman of God, Ama Israel, Ama Christy, to come. She was talking. She said when she was boarding the plane that something happened that has never happened before. That she felt like river, like, as if, she, you know, that she has never had such a thing happen before. She couldn't understand. As we were talking yesterday, and he was speaking, and all sorts of things were happening. She was trying to restrain herself because she just felt so driven. She felt something, something. You know, and I turned, I looked at my, I checked a device of mine. I checked, it was charging. Someone had plugged it. I checked 88. Okay. Later on, some time passed, five, ten minutes. Then I went to plug in something else. I checked another device, 88%. I went like, wow, that is interesting. I was on a call. The call finished. I dropped it. I saw the battery, 88%. You can't make these things happen. Three times, that shot. This was before I went to the parlor at the time, and we were sitting together and talking. I'm saying that to say this, that it's a new day. For those who don't understand what it represents, new beginning, new season, new day. I saw it eight, eight, double each time, and I saw it three times in a space of maybe 30 minutes. If you came and reset my phones or my devices to tell me 88, God is watching you. <laughs> but I really doubt you had any hand in it. One was the battery was finishing. One, the battery was charging up. But they all jammed at 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8. Why? What's happening? There are other things I said I can't recall and I don't want to take the time to try and do it. I'm just saying that God, something is cooking. Something is cooking. You know, you all know, this is the second Servant of God we've had in this place. We had one two weeks ago on the 1st of September. Abby? It was 1st September, which was also marking something from a year before, which we found out later. I can't remember. You guys remember better some of this. This is what? The 20, 22nd, 21 days later. And here we are again. None of those things planned on a Wednesday in the evening. Simple, unplanned, no planning. How do you keep... A servant of God that was on his way somewhere, uh, you just met, seemingly by error, and say, please, can you stay and keep... Uh, his daughter was calling last night and saying, uh, so, we, uh, where are you? And he said, he's not coming. Even me, I was surprised, like, because there was no plan. And he refused to go <laughs> to his own daughter, who is in town. He lives in another state, and he's in a state, and he stayed in a, with us. In God's goodness, like he said, when you see, when you hear... I mean, you can see it. No airs, nothing complicated, nothing. There wasn't an invitation from Sir, can we come and bring you? No, he came with another servant of God from Ikorobasi to see this one. It's all, oh, I don't want to go into all of that. My whole point is that when God wants to do something, you all must have learned. I know we have visitors. This is your first time. Welcome. God bless you. Get used to it. Um, you know, <laughs> lots of strange things, seemingly not normal, no hype, no drama, no... And you might think, you know, it doesn't appear, no razzmatazz and, you know, all complicated. No. Why? Because the God we serve, as anyone knows, operates, he, he uses signs. He's speaking through signs. He's, he's indicating things. Some of these things will be understanding 10 years from now, 5 years from now. Oh, I understand why it was that date. Oh, I understand. Everybody will still be understanding. He'll still be understanding for the first time. 
It's the way God does things. Layer after layer after layer, he'll continue to reveal. And we are so blessed that he would have him here, um, you know, contributing to helping us. So if you have a question, I said I wanted to throw one. We've talked about Lumbaobu here at some point. You know, and you tell me you're from Abbey. That's the angle. <laughs> I don't even know how to phrase the question. All I know is that... <laughs> All I know is that we have wondered. I've preached here and I said, I wish I could find someone that knows more or could give us a little understanding of... of that devilish ministry. <laughs> I just suspect you might know something. Yeah, thank you. Uh, that we Lord. can learn from in the present in connection to the past. Praise the Lord. Yes, sir. You know, in a nutshell, Lumba was an illiterate. He was an illiterate. And he was selling Ubu. This Ubu, he was selling it. And you know, when you sell Ubu, it has to do with water. We go to buy this and that. Uh, at first, he was an apostolic. He was an apostolic. He came out of apostolic to start court. He started. You know, he, he went into psychic mystics. Why? I want you to know that the word mystic. <laughs> no, listen to me. The word mystic, there's nothing wrong about it. Yes. Because Christianity is mystical. Yes. Yes. But I normally like to qualify it by using the word psychic mystic, soulish mystic, yes. psychic mystic. When we talk about psychic mystic, we are talking about those who are investing, I mean, in investigating the universe with another means, not God. God is not their vehicle. The devil and demons are their vehicle. That's the one I'm talking about. Like when you talk about Ogboni, talk about Rosicrucian, we talk about lodges and all those things. Just to... So this man continued and he was climbing the ladder and the thing that helped him to shoot up I've forgotten exactly the year was it 76 or was it 77 or thereabout. If there have been any adult here they would hear about by then well, they were using sheep from Oron. Yes. And that ship was so loaded. And that ship was sunk with all the people dying. So he collected a lot of blood, contributed a lot of blood to shoot him up in the sacred mystic to become authority. And indeed, he governed every even India. They will come by and by to him. All the people, he became now that poor. And he, he began to define, since his name is Olumba, Olumba Obo. So the O, O, O. They now talk about it as a munisayan, a munipresent, and a munipotent. He was devilish. Uh, he was devilish. He really shook. And no governor, no president in Nigeria that, that will be there without coming to in the night to come and bar. Even this, the last presidency that they were doing, um, I will, all of them came in the night to bar or to him. So he was such an authority. He paid the price. He was such an authority. I have had an encounter with him twice. The first encounter that I had with him was 1976. But then I was still working, and I was working in Edja Memorial Hospital. Uh, in that encounter, I was preaching to one of his members. So as I was preaching in that encounter, and I said, Olumba, Olumba is not God. And he said, he's going to call his God. I said, go and call him. Now, in that uh, 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 revelation, as I was standing, not long, but then I've not even known him. I do not even know him on a physical one-on-one, -on -one, physically. 
But he, I saw a man coming with shorts, white shorts, white and white shorts, and was holding a live crocodile. Was holding a white crocodile, and I was standing there. I was binding, and so when he comes, he will just come in and turn and go back. He did that many times and go back. He didn't do me anything. That was that. Then, then another encounter I had was when I finally came to Calabar and where we were making the baptism, that place, it was when I entered the river as I turned that marina and I saw written there a hut. Oh, oh, oh. I said, it's okay. I prayed, took authority, and then we baptized Sango. That night, I had an encounter with him again. Uh -uh. He came so violent. That was 19... That was since 1989. That is around 1989. And we went into battle. And this, my hand, became sword. And I put it on his, on his head. On his neck. I was just sawing and sawing and sawing and sawing and sawing until the head cut off and blood still. And I shouted, Olumba, Olumba is dead. Olumba, Olumba is dead. And the thing spill. I've had encounter and, <laughs> and I have had difficulties. They have attacked me. Oh my God. But for God. And then, as it happened, this thing I'm writing, I'm saying, I have written it, I put it, my experience, I put it in that book, Reincarnation, which was published in 1952, um, 1992. I put it there, my encounter with him. I put it there. And we were so dairy that if you go to 34 Mbukwa, their gate, we took our, what we call, uh, 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 um, reading expedition. We came and mounted it. <laughs> mounted it. This is a gate. And we mounted it here. And preach. Ambo. Ambo. And preach for how many days? Is it three days? And preach. It's God, though. When, <laughs> <laughs> when I look back, I say, this man. <laughs> My God. It's God. And they have tried. They came, one of the ones that my, this my daughter who called me yesterday, but then she was uh, in her 12, rather 12, 15. We were having a fasting. I was in the, in the church premises. Then before she could come and tell me, a woman with a lumba lumba, uh, no. green bird and barefooted has come, gone round with a black and big sand. With a, before she could come and I could come out, she has moved to the gate and vanished. I have seen things. Things have happened. But that those things cannot stop Amen. the move. It cannot. Praise the Lord. It cannot in the name of Jesus. Now, I didn't see any hands go up. That's why I went on. We have 10 minutes left. Nine, actually. Before I put it. That's one hand. Were you raising a hand for him? or Okay. So, this is not exactly a question. I just, just a confirmation. It, it's not very often that you speak about the Lumbabu. So, my last business trip to Calabar. On Saturday morning. I'm driving down to the warehouse where I had my stuff. And for your information, the man died, I think, half a million months. Sorry, please. And when he died, you know, they refused to celebrate. The Lumba has died, though, yeah, and gone. After that, your dream. Yeah, you know, about a year or about two years. After that. Yes. I know the cover yes. The cover, but what happened was that this God, eh, that day, I don't look at television, but on my parlor, I was waiting. And they were celebrating the death of Olumba. They themselves were celebrating and celebrating. 
Since that day, after that day, they have never made that mistake. <laughs> They celebrated it. It's wow. okay, sir. Okay, so this is not ju- this is this Olumba topic is not a coincidence. That's the point I'm trying to make yeah. because, I, you know, I'm going down Calabar South, just one of those roads, either Yellow Duke or something. And there is this long procession of Olumba people, tens of thousands of people, very long. I, I made a video of it. I was going to send it to you, sir, but I got caught up. Tens of thousands of people, and they are chanting songs. The first song I heard was Olumba should come and be a quickening spirit. They called him the quickening spirit. And I was like, is, not, is it not the Holy Spirit that should be the quickening spirit? The, the Uber driver that was carrying me, I was making the video, the guy was just laughing. He said, you, you have not seen anything. And we drove all the way down to Ekbo Basi, down, down, down. The whole road, they had a procession. And then the second song, song I picked up was, they were commanding Olumba to rise up like the morning star and they sang it and no he, it. he he claimed to be father claimed it to be the song and claimed it to be the holy spirit yes wow. so you talk about that mo- a moment you fall which you said something terrible happened and you regretted it and you didn't say much a little thing that led to the falling, so we can learn. Uh, it's sin, sin is sin. So, 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 <laughs> so <laughs> is that right? Don't joke with sin, please. Take note of that. Take note of that. Sin, you know, it's amazing. Again, when I'm a Christy. If we have the privilege of having her share with us also. She was telling her testimony two days ago yesterday. And she talked about how the, a revival mm-hmm. happened in the same year he got saved. Mm-hmm. And it seems, in fact, as I said, she said that's the same year Regina got saved. It seemed all over the world things were happening. The year he got saved, she, they were in Joss. She got saved. You hear the story. Another sister who got saved in Joss. She's in, a, in, a, in a, a Calabada. She's also a minister. That 1972. Same year. Same so year. it seems, again, I don't want to take the story from you, but in a place with multiple schools, school of nursing, blind school, student school, secondary school, all of them, like a whole village, missionaries everywhere, independently, the power of God fell on all of them. Mighty move of God. No plan, zero Anglican church, nobody knew nothing. You know, nobody. School closed three days after. They couldn't, school couldn't go on. Everyone scattered, preaching as they went. No preparation, no warning, no Pentecost, no Holy Ghost baptism. But they got baptized in the Holy Ghost. No sermon. Everything happened. Obviously, it's the same thing that hit him. Hit, 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 hit all over this nation. And even out there in the world. I'm trying to say that when God wants to do something like the vision we heard here, shared about a massive number of youth. God wants to do those things. God wants to do that. He, God doesn't say things he doesn't want to do. That's right. He wants to do it. And sin is the one thing that will tamper with it. Like she said, she said a conviction, it was instant. She didn't do anything bad per se that she can know of. Not that she was born again. She was a church Christian girl. Her father was involved in church and elder, serious. But all she knows is that she felt like the most horrible sinner, the conviction of the Holy Spirit. And when that comes, it changes everything. And everyone, almost everyone, for days, they were destroying clothes. She said, without a single sermon, nothing, no mention, girls were bringing out things. And the fire burned for days, burning their nonsense property, burning their rubbish clothes, whatever rubbish clothes they had that time. <laughs> And it wasn't even rubbish clothes, it was just, I mean, 70s. Said so they're just burning. And it burned for days. The fire had fuel for days. Went on for three days. It was just burning. Without a single sermon. So you ask yourself, what is it? I was listening to her and I'm wondering, what is it that makes people that have not been told something with the ear to suddenly start pushing away from something? There must be a force. Could it be Satan? Okay, I'll now ask you. 
So it'll be relevant. What is it that makes someone that knows God and has been told to get rid of certain things keep something? Could it be Jesus? That's all I'll say about that part. All right. <laughs> Our time is almost up. You have uh, two more minutes. Was there another hand? Okay, sir. Um, you've been a Christian for close to 50 years now. My question is, what is the one thing that kept you going on this Christian journey, kept you steadfast so that we, the younger generation, can learn? Thank you, sir. The simple truth is the Lordship of Christ. When you allow Christ to be Lord over your life, you become obedient. That is all. Every other thing comes, comes in. It's the Lordship of Christ. That is a problem of Pentecost, Pentecostal. They don't, they have all things they have, but they refuse to submit Lordship. to the Lordship of Christ. And that is the restoration that the Lord is bringing. Mm. So I hope you understand that. Yeah. Pentecostalism, you know, I've, we've shared in the past, the, the, the sacrifice they bring is two wheat loaves. Baked with living. There's living yes. in the loaves that are presented at Pentecost as opposed to what comes at the barley loaves at uh, Passover that is without any living. That's right. And in the tabernacles, as the wine is poured out, as every other thing that is brought, there will be no room for that. It will just be the spirit of truth. That's right. And he will come in his power. And this season, you know, this tabernacle season, smack dab where we are. So I don't think, again, these things are coincidence. I believe that as scripture says that God will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, That's the right. hearts of the children to the father, that God is speaking <coughs> a thing to us in this season and time that we must note. See the signs. Hear the signs. You heard that. I will take it as a prophetic word, you know, that some of you will write and your books will be used in schools and all of that. You heard what he said about Wale Shoenka, about Chino Achebe. I think I've told you some of that before. Chino Achebe, before he passed away, he dropped a book, yes? That book is contributing to the problems of Nigeria right now. When I said it years ago, you didn't, may not have understood. He dropped a book that has stirred up anger and wrath. Stirred up, dropped a book that is offensive. He dropped a book that will cause offense and pain. So, you know, I believe that listen to me. You've seen a camera before. <laughs> listen, it's just a phone. Not a phone. Mm. <laughs> so, Chino Achebe left a book. and shot, I mean, the thing was just published. He died. Why? How many of you have seen it? There was a country. Have you heard the name of the book? And funnily, I just noticed this book, that book, this book some days ago in my library. I remember I was in Abuja many years ago, and I bought it through the vehicle window, my friend's car, and I, I bought how much, and I paid him. I, I haven't read it. I glanced through it. He calls it, there was a country. And you see people, how many of you hear people say there was a country all over the place? Do you understand what you did? How many of you used to say there was a country? You used to. You've repented. You used to. Do you know what you're saying? Do you, do you understand what it means? You don't? You're contributing to the disintegration of Nigeria. You're cursing the nation. He's ripping your, the screen. The, uh, Proverbs 11, 11. Through the speaking of the wicked, the city is destroyed. Through the blessing of the righteous. So he left a curse. Why? Did you hear him? How many of you saw some, read some parts where he talked about his father becoming a Christian and joining, becoming a catechist? Him. Here he is. How many decades later? advocating African traditional religion that we should leave all those white men's things. So by the time people like Nam Nikano are coming to say the same thing, that we should go back. That's why all of you, last, last uh, tarry, two tarries ago, all night meeting where I began to, do you hear me? Where I began to just hammer for seemingly no reason. Of course there was a reason. You know, I don't speak. <laughs> you know, it has to be the Holy Spirit. I heard later that it was a very specific. I was killing someone. I was finishing people. Very specific that were coming for the first time and all that. Again, it's the norm. I should have known. Just that I never remember. 
you know, even Chibuzo's testimony that he gave it that day, they were just giving someone an uppercut. All of that was the Holy Spirit. But I am saying that when you join in, anyone that comes to tell you, I mean, I'm the kind who comes out clearly and tells you that, forget this joke. People start come out plainly, then they soften it for political reasons. People that come out and tell you Jesus is the white man's God. If you're, if you're following a worshiper of demons, you see if you end up in heaven. How do you follow demon worshippers? Take their, their counsel. Look at, like he said about Wolesha Inka, he began the pirate confraternity. And from there, multiple cults. And they'll pretend, no, it's no big deal. Is it no big deal? Some of you have not heard any stories about cultism or you don't know anything about it. Huh? I've had people talk to me about being caught and chopping human beings up, chopping people up and packing them into Ghana must go. So leave all this nonsense. You don't become a blood talking and he worships uh, Orisha or whatever openly. He worships their old gods. And those are the books you're reading. The Walesha and Kaz, the Chino Achebes. What do you think is happening? It's the same thing that happens to artistic types in America. Demons, because they influence things, the Voltaires of France, every place, the artistic, the, 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 the ones who influence opinion, Satan goes after them like going after a preacher, knowing that when they speak, it will reach far and wide. Long after they are dead, people will be reading their stuff. Do you understand? It's a, they are like mediums. They are channels. They are channels. And that's what the devil is doing. And when you foolishly go around sticking your mouth on every pipe end and start sucking and say no. So you be quoting Wole Shenka. Well, when he talks, you go, yes, uh -huh. the man is talking because he can speak English. Don't make me begin to speak English. <laughs> because now you just purposely, is it that hard? If someone began to develop his own grammar in this country, and we, I mean, we enjoy him and all that, is it hard? It's to decide to want to do it. And then you begin. And you apply yourself. And with little ability, you can do anything. And then everybody says, oh, such a, such a wonderful. What makes you wonderful? When you're pushing people back to gods that have been kicked out by the power of the light of Jesus. And then they are telling you, bring it back. And they are open. I downloaded some videos where the Inka was talking about. I haven't watched it yet. Some clips. And he was talking about why Christianity is not, is white man's religion, all sorts of things. I'll watch it when I have the time. I downloaded it maybe a month ago. These are things they don't hide while you hold them in admiration. Watch who you admire. Watch who you admire. Because if that same spirit is on you, it, you we will clash. You know, I look at people now, I watch, I see them here and there, I'm like, ah, see someone we will clash with. How many of you ever feel that yeah, people, you clash? Clashes are coming. Oh, you think you'll always be 21. Oh, you think you'll always be 30. You think you'll always be 25. Did you hear? The clashes are coming. The sons of Greece and the sons of Zion. Yeah. Our heads will but there's, It's impossible. Are you going to occupy the same space? Are we going to be in the same space? And, oh, oh, they will take your children. They will take the people that look up to you. They will take away the little light that is. If you will not arise to the occasion. In past times, it was Christians that wrote the books, wrote the novels, wrote the stories. And then with time, all sorts came in. Everybody has an agenda. The devil will use whoever is available. If we make ourselves available, we will be used of him. If we refuse to make ourselves available, if we allow sin to take control of our lives, if we refuse to allow the lordship of Jesus, if you stand in the middle, you stand in the middle and say, well, I don't want to. Well, you know, uh, being a Christian does not mean you come up plainly every time. You don't have to. Uh, what are you talking about? But being a devil, you can come out plainly. Till today, I'll never understand how people come out plainly. A girl comes to another girl and says, why do you dress like this? And attacks your dressing and tries to make you dress like a prostitute. By the way, if you don't know in the Bible, there's the dressing of the prostitute. It's written plainly. The Bible tells you that she dressed like a prostitute. There's prostituting dressing. You know, it's for selling your body. You sell your wares. It's called packaging, advertising. And then... A Christian girl will see someone doing what is wrong and can't tell, say, no, I don't want to sound as if I'm condemning. But a devilish girl comes plainly and says, no, you look to tear the dress. Scissors, please. Tear, look, you know, is, and is bold about it. It's in your face. 
we will get into the face of darkness in the name of Jesus. Amen. We must get into the face of darkness because it is time for the light to shine. It's a Bible study, okay? Really, today is normally a Bible study. It's not really a prayer meeting, but we're going to ask our Father here to pray for us. We're going to ask him to say, you know, some simple prayer, bless us, you know, just, just, just give us something from the depths of the grace of God that he has received of over these nearly 50 years. It is no mean for you. heard him, the same thing we preach. You heard the same words he was saying. He, 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 said, he said lordship, you know, different things he said. How is he hitting the same thing? Because God has shown him what will be. He saw. Can you imagine all of us that think we've tried? Ah, we've tried. Look at since 2016, that time. Ah, 217, that time I came, 218. Since 1973. And he thought the thing he saw would happen the next day. Next day. Can you imagine the potential for discouragement? But here he still is. Here he still is. Here he still is. He hasn't turned back. Yon, you got a word last month. Was since 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 2018, God told me I would be free. You've given up. What will you do when you're both on the line of judgment? And he shows up and he's been slogging it out for 50 years. And you, you couldn't slog it out for five months. What will you say? You say, God, you understand now. Understand what? Understand what? The spirit of life and boldness, the spirit of grace. I'll just leave him to say a word of blessing in the next two, three, four, five minutes. You know, as the Lord gives him utterance, as he finishes, we go. But I want you to receive. Receive of that which God gives. Don't take it lightly that you don't understand. It doesn't matter. Take it from me that you should ask God. Let the blessing of the fathers, of those that have gone before, every representational grace that has been received, everything, even... I mean, you guys are, yes, prophetic. We've seen the grace of God in the prophetic. But you've heard him. How many of you have gone to heaven multiple times? How many times do you think you've gone to heaven, sir? No I mean, estimates, sir. Just you know, guesstimate. You know, this one that people are now going, as I put it, <laughs> because in those days, when you go, you know, it, it will look as if uh, it is not real. But today, people go there. No, I have gone there over 10 times. Okay. He is over ten times. He takes me. I don't know. Not only there, he has taken me to hell. I've been to hell. Then to the heavenlies. Yeah. You know, the countries, the different uh, colonies in the heavenlies. Yeah. It's well, sir. So yes. uh, you know. So I'll just ask you. I think this is working now. Yes, I'll just ask that you say a word of of blessing over this house. And uh, we receive of that which, whether you're standing or kneeling, when whichever, some were kneeling already. To his presence, I'm so happy. When I come into his presence, I'm so glad. In your presence, there is anointing, there is spirit all around me. In your presence, the anointing praise. Two more times, please. I am now come into your presence. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. And I come into your presence. I'm so I am so glad. Yeah. And the spirit all around me, your presence, the anointing. One more time, I'm so glad there is a, there's anointing here. Hallelujah. The Spirit of the Lord is moving around. Yes. 
that not every yoke is broken in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you. For in your presence, every yoke is destroyed, is broken. Any one of us here still under one yoke or the other, tonight I cause it to be destroyed in your life in the name of Jesus. Lord, there's a kicking up and the hour is now. Not by might, not by power, but by your spirit. I release your spirit of grace to settle upon this, these souls who are desirous to know you. Let it be quickening in their soul and an enlightenment. There be a lifting up even tonight, touch their mind. Let there be a revolution in their mind. In the mighty name of Jesus. Those who have discovered their gifts, let them grow more in it. Those who have not discovered, I release it upon them. Go with it. Have it. In the name of Jesus. Lord, every one of us under this roof must be preserved. I pray for the preservation of every one of us here that we will not fall down to the devil. The Lord will uphold us and keep us going forward ever, backward never, in the name of Jesus. Everyone has a destiny. Lord, I release everyone to fulfill his or her destiny. And what it takes to fulfill that destiny is released upon you. In the name of Jesus, I command a rewiring of your mind in the spiritual sense. In the name of Jesus. And I say, Lord, let it be divine connectivity to the right sources, right persons. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you. Lift up your servant and his wife for this great, great work and the lieutenants into your hand. This is a great work. There's no two ways about it. I say, Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you again. Thank you, and Lord. again, I say, thank, thank you. you Preserve him. Amen. Preserve the wife. Preserve the family. Amen. Preserve his lieutenants. Amen. Open him up again Amen. to greater dimensions of your grace and your anointing and your wisdom in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. For 30 seconds, just stretch your hands. Ask for the grace of God. Come on. Give it, give it, give it. La brecata si proto la gita. More life, more strength. Rejuvenation, 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 rejuvenation. Jesus more grace, strengthen his bones, strengthen his flesh, strengthen his eyes, strengthen his hair, strengthen his feet, strengthen his heart, strengthen his inner heart, strengthen, strengthen, renew like an eagle. In his old age, Yarabatalaga, renew like an eagle, great God. Renew, 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 extend, extend, empower, reclarify. Recalibrate everything that is off center. Rapreka si protaloga. Embradila sito. Bless him. Bless him. Bless him, great God. Shining bright. Shining bright. We give of that which you've given us. Mali parida kibra sito lagata. Le bradilo si teligada, limbra di la ghiacciata. New oil, fresh 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 oil, Jesus. You will shine in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Father, we ask you to do more than we've asked to imagine. You know. You know, Father, give the answers. Give the answers. Upgrades of every sort. 
of that which you've given us we received of that which you've given him of that which you've given us we ask that you give lord god bless you come and smite the land with the cross jesus thank you lord god in the name of jesus amen